Greetings, fellow hostages. Captain Black, free security activist here. Today's topic, New Orleans is a post-police city. Whether you're a police supporter or a police skeptic, one thing both sides agree on is that New Orleans Police Department is an anemic and increasingly depopulated condition. This exodus this blue hemorrhage achieved quantum leap and warp speed under the dictatorial leadership of none other than Mitch Landrieu. Not surprisingly, this agency now has the very ignominious and unsettling distinction of staffing every other law enforcement agency and professions than itself. It literally can't seem to bribe, beg, nor borrow its existing force, nor recruits. We have, in a very real sense, entered the age of being a post-police city in New Orleans. Its implications are becoming frighteningly apparent whether you're left or right, whether you're black or white. You do not have the ready assurance that dialing 911 will bring an officer to your assistance within the national average. Currently, New Orleans is tracking at three times the national average. Depending upon the perception, or to be fair, the severity of your call. You may find yourself at the end of a very long queue of requests for service. I am a free security activist. I also am a police supporter. But in a post-police city, the lion's share of our safety returns to our hands. I see embattled enclaves of white folks in high-risk inner-city areas who, despite sometimes painful evidence to the contrary, tell themselves they're living in Rodeo Drive or some other suburban paradise. I see inner-city stakeholders ignored by their city council persons, dismissed by their precinct commanders, disabused by their quality of life officers, bringing their concerns to the established avenues of redress only to have these concerns go unanswered. Again, I have stated I am a police supporter, but it's very hard to support what we see passing for a police department under the dictatorial reign of Mitch Landry. But Mitch has achieved one highly unlikely union. He has united police skeptics who would be hard pressed to agree with the time of day if a police officer offered it, with police supporters who nominally would have backed police officers on virtually any use of force or related topic and now find themselves doubting whether or not they continue to lend such broad support. In the middle a consensus is growing in New Orleans. This consensus includes free security, where we have to assume far more responsibility for our safety than in days of yore, and police advocacy, where a department being treated like sharecroppers, being treated like vassals, being treated like peasants, is not only morally offensive, but it is also militarily perilous. Our post-police city has given violent criminals the morale boost that no reasonable person, left or right, black nor white, would have wanted. Our post-police city has allowed violent vagrants, violent gangs, violent individuals to literally 
have had any of us or our property, securing the knowledge that either there aren't enough police to respond or because of politics, even if the police respond, they are virtually assured of not being punished. The only security we have, fellow hostages, is the security from within ourselves. As we stress, as we push for personal responsibility in the arena of securing ourselves, we must also stress and push for public accountability from the mayor who has destroyed the police department in a majority black city, which if we trickle down the terror, places even more low-income black people at risk than previous administrations. His strategy to focus all available assets under his command and borrow like the Louisiana State Police, to focus them exclusively on the high-income French Quarter has failed because while relative safety has been guaranteed in those areas where the forces are massed, recent broad daylight gun battles in the adjacent CBD area shows that high income areas that are not part of the French Quarter Protection Scheme are just as vulnerable as low income areas like the East, more commonly known as New Orleans East, to outsiders, and ever bloody Central City. The post-police reality in New Orleans demands new thinking, new coalitions, and new advocacy. It does not mean that we have to abandon support of self-defense, nor does it mean we have to abandon support of police reform. It does mean that we have to abandon thinking that we can sit on the sidelines and hope against hope, against the growing danger of a post-police city.